Now, we're going to show you the four major techniques of massage. You'll learn here how to uh, spread oil on a person, how to perform kneading, how to stretch uh, muscle areas, and at the end of everything, how to rebalance the area. What I suggest is that you watch the entire video at first, then go back, review it slowly, pausing, and then start doing your practice, your first practice, directly on the person. In this first video session, what you need to do is to learn slowly these four major massage movements. They're very simple. So practice them, repeat them until you feel comfortable with them, and then as soon as you feel comfortable, move on to the next step, where I'll begin to show you how each single part of the body, starting from the feet, has to be massaged using these four basic movements. Dove io incomincerò a farti vedere ogni singola parte del corpo, quindi incominceremo dai piedi, come viene massaggiata con queste quattro manualità. So, don't worry, because it's difficult to make a mistake. All you have to do is copy what I do, pause, then go back to the same scene several times in order to follow what I'm doing so that you'll be able to manage these four simple massage techniques. So, I needed to explain this first, but now we can start working. A very important rule is to rub the cream or oil on the body uh, by warming your hands first. It would be quite unpleasant to put cold oil directly onto the person's body. As you can see here, in this part, the oil is first warmed in the hands and afterwards it is rubbed onto the body. While you're doing this, be careful not to hurry rubbing the oil, but rather rub it slowly and rhythmically. In this first video course, it doesn't really matter what sort, what sort of oil you use. The sweet almond oil would be fine to start with. In the next courses, we'll focus on the use of the essential oils. Therefore, in this first part, I'm interested in teaching you the skills since there's always time to refine later the choice of specific oils. By rubbing the cream perfectly, you'll start relaxing the muscles of the person we're working with. The kneading massage technique is carried out as follows. First, place one hand followed by the other and then start squeezing the tissue. First in one direction and then in the other. In the slow motion image, you can see how the hands alternate. This kneading massage technique is a very uh, simple job and quite easy to perform. It's almost easier to do it than to explain it. The important thing is to alternate your hands. So first you squeeze with one hand, and then the other does the same. Some areas of the body will be more troublesome than others. For example, the internal calf when the person is on one's back. This makes the kneading massage more difficult to be performed with your full hand. So you'll have to use your fingers a little better. In this way, the kneading movement will be smaller. You can also see here, in this image, how to massage the arm area, where there are more muscles that makes the massage easier. You'll have to alternate your hands during the kneading movement, and the result should always be very consistent. On the other hand, in these images, you can see how the kneading is getting smaller and smaller as soon as I get close to the hand. 
This is very simple and pleasant to receive. During the kneading movement, the muscles are being squeezed and compressed, and that will get the blood flowing. Therefore, these muscles receive a lot of oxygen, and muscle recovery after exertion or after pain, such as back pain or leg pain, will tend to disappear much more quickly. So this kneading massage movement is a fundamental skill. I would define it the number one skill, because if it's carried out in the right way, its benefits to the body are really enormous. Concerning the pressure you need to use, always use a bit of common sense, which means that the pressure should be intense, but not exaggerated. Let me explain. During the kneading massage movement, the person will feel the pressure of this kneading, and this pressure will have to be strong enough. The important thing is that he or she does not feel any pain, so the pressure will have to be neither too superficial, because otherwise we might risk annoying the person, uh, nor too strong. Based upon what the person tells you, try to find a balanced level of pressure in a way that he or she feels an intense and rich massage, uh, but never pain. Keep in mind that the pain threshold, which I will explain later on, changes from person to person. Uh, it's possible that using the same intensity with two different persons, one person will find it quite painful and the other person is too light. Uh, this means that it's up to you to regulate the pressure accordingly, based upon the person you are massaging at that moment. Relaxing the muscle areas is perfect for stretching the different muscular groups. How do we do this? Start from one end of the muscle and slowly we arrive to the other end. The pressure of this massage movement has to be slow, continuous and constant. I repeat, as you see here, quite slowly, continuous and constant. In other words, don't start fast and then slow down towards the end. When relaxing these muscles, performing the massage movements that I teach you, <clears throat> and taking into account trying not to hurt the person, will give them a, quite a sensation of freedom and mobility. At this point, I'm not interested that you should write down what I'm showing you. The important thing is to explain these basic concepts, these four massage skills. As I've already said, the first one is to rub the cream carefully. The second one is the kneading massage movement. And now the relaxation of the uh, muscular groups. As you can see here, Stretching one foot tendon from the other gives great mobility to the whole treated area and a certain sensation of lightness. At the end of each passage, on every single treated part of the body, we should proceed with the rebalancing. This is nothing other than a final caress after you've uh, massaged an area for a long time. Let me give you an example. After having massaged the right leg, including the kneading movement, rubbing and relaxing the muscles, you'll have to perform a slower and more delicate movement. This is the rebalancing to end all the parts that have already been performed on the leg. Only after this procedure should you proceed with the other parts of the leg or on the back. Don't forget to do this. I define this as the, the cherry on top, since it calms the person in all the treated parts of the body. Let me give you an example. 
As I explained before regarding the leg, even after several massages done on the back, a similar massage, like the one you are watching right now, relaxes both the back and the whole person, including his or her nervous system. 